Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about all of the books that I ended up reading in the later half of May. I apologize for how late this video is going up. Normally I try and get it out towards the beginning of the next month if that makes sense. Um, but in the beginning of June, I was on vacation. And if you want to know where I was on vacation and who I met up with, you can watch my video talking about all of that link down below. I met up with some booktube besties. Also, if you want to know about the 20 something books that I read in the beginning of May, the first half of May, I'll link that video down below as well for you to check out. We're just gonna be talking about the later half in this video because there are a lot of books to talk about. I have um, 19 books that I finished and one that I DNF'd. So let's get into these books. We're gonna be starting with the DNF because that's the next on my list. The book that I DNF'd in the later half of May was Owned by Fate by Tessa Bailey. I've been trying to get into Tessa Bailey's backlist. Her books are not necessarily my favorite thing ever, but there have been ones that I've enjoyed, but only like a tiny few. And this one was just not it. <laughs> I think this is one of the first books in like a BDSM club type romance series. And sometimes the author writes in the series. Like I think Tessa Bailey wrote the first three books and then Katie Robert wrote two more books and then another author wrote other books like authors wrote in the series that are connected if that makes sense but i think the only com common commonality is that a word i don't know commonality between them is that they're all taking place in this club i dnf'd it at 43 percent and um the dialogue was just so cringy that i had to stop and we're gonna leave it at that some of the books on here aren't necessarily full-length books but i count it on my goodreads so i count it as a book okay i've already like almost close to going over my Goodreads goal, so it doesn't matter if I count these or not, I'm still gonna go over my goal by the end of the year. So I read a bunch of the Ice Planet Barbarian mini novella shorts that are like literally just a couple handful of pages um, and they're all on her website and her Facebook group. So um, also let me know down below if like you want a tutorial on how to like find these. Like these are all free. This is not pirating. Ruby Dixon put these out on the internet for the public for free. So the first one that I read was Joden's Story, book number 15.1. Uh, and this is just like a little short, cute novella about Josie and Hayden putting their kids to bed and telling a story. Super cute, gave it three stars. I then read Wrapped Up In You by Talia Hibbert. I'm trying to read all of that list of my favorite authors. So Talia Hibbert is definitely one of my favorites. It doesn't matter if it's not Christmas season, I will read a Christmas book. I'll read a Halloween book if it's not Halloween time. Like I do not care what time of year it is. I will read whatever book I want. So I read a Christmas book in May. <laughs> so this one is centered around William and Abby and they have been childhood best friends for quite a long time and William is also close to Abby's older brother as well so it's kind of like William has been kind of like adopted into Abby and her family's house and every year he comes over to her grandma's house for Christmas. Both of them have been pining over each other ever since they were kids. Abby thinks that she isn't really William's type and has never like revealed her feelings because she thinks she's gonna get rejected. Whereas William thinks the basically exact same thing as Abby and she's been in previous relationships and has been very much hurt. She's a, a divorcee and um, he does not want to put her through anything like her husband, ex-husband did. So he's been very gentle and patient with her and he's finally going to reveal to Abby how he feels. He's like, this is the year. I'm gonna tell her how I feel. Also, William is like a very popular actor in America now, um, even though this takes place in England. Like he's basically like Captain America, fictional Captain America. He's a superhero face. Looks like Crim's, Crim, Crim, Chris Hemsworth. Man, I can't speak. Chris Hemsworth on the cover. This is probably one of the funniest um, holiday romances I've ever read. It was super, super funny. There's meddlesome family members, meddlesome grandmother, and even some meddlesome kittens and just like hilarity. Talia Hibbert is such an amazing author. I will always laugh while reading one of her books and I love how she can add in some serious aspects in all of her books as well as make you laugh and make you cry. I love this one. I gave it four stars. The tropes in this one, you have books with pets. Oh, there's a bunch of cats in here. Her grandmother is a cat lady for sure. It's a celebrity romance, character with glasses. I think the heroine has glasses in this one. It's a Christmas book. 
Um, friends to lovers, funny romance, grumpy sunshine, where the heroine is the grump and the hero is the sunshine. It's a holiday romance. There is longing. Um, there's a snowstorm where they're stuck in a house together. And I would definitely categorize this as a winter read. I then decided to pick up another book in the Interstellar Bride Program series. I've just been slowly making my way through this series. Um, it's an alien romance series by Grace Goodwin and there's a bunch of interconnecting subseries as well. So this is book number five, part of The Colony, which is a subseries of the Interstellar Bride Program. This one's called um, Cyborg Fever. And so this is a romance between Aang and Kira. So this is the first book in the series that I've come across where um, the people in the couple are not put in the Interstellar Bride Program. Like they're put in this internet system thing that matches you to your perfect mate across the galaxy kind of whatever. Um, so this is the first time that the characters were not put in that. They like met each other the old fashioned way. <laughs> and so I found that to be very unique compared to Grace Goodwin's very reused plots in her alien romances. The two of them meet on the colony, which is like a cyborg planet full of cyborg aliens. And um, Kira is on a secret mission for like the big army of the entire universe. And then she has kind of like a one night stand with Aang um, and kind of like sneaks out afterward. And Aang is pissed and goes after to find his mate because he thinks that she is his mate. This was really fun. I really liked it. One of my favorites in the Colony series for sure. For tropes, you have alien romance, cyborgs, and one night to more. I then reread Crown of Midnight by <laughs> Sarah J. Mass. I am really behind on my SJM read along. Um, Hi Katniss, would you like some pets? Come here. I'm gonna just pet her while chatting with you or she will start crying again. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is the second book in the Throne of Glass series. I'm very behind on the SJM along. Um, I was sick, had a bunch of episodes with my chronic illness, a big flare up whenever this book, you had to read it by a certain date and I was having a bunch of flare ups when that was happening. So I finally read it in May and I'm about to start Air of Fire. So this is the second book in the Throne of Glass series, a YA fantasy series. Well, the beginning of it is, and then it kind of like grows to new adult as more books go along. I want to say like by Queen of Shadows and later, it's kind of like a new adult book. Anyway, I really enjoyed this. Five stars, one of my favorite series of all time. Next, I read Princess in Disguise by Karen Hawkins. This is actually book number 1.5, a part of this series, which is um, the Duchess Diaries series. First book is How to Capture Countess. I've read all of the books in this series now, now that I finished this novella because it's book number 1.5. And I recommend you don't read this. <laughs> I love these books in the, like the main books in the series. I have given almost all of them five stars. I loved them. This one, I gave a measly two and I was surprised. First of all, it took me forever to get through and it was only like 100 pages. And there were just things in here I did not care for. Okay, well, first of all, basically this is kind of like an Anastasia retelling, but not really. You have Princess um, Alexandra, who is from Russia and she goes to Scotland because her tutor in Russia is Scottish and she's like, I want a man like him. So I'm gonna go to Scotland to find a husband. She ends up meeting our hero in here. Can't remember his name for the life of me, but um, he is kind of one of the men that's like, I have been sworn to never marry because I have faced a lot of tragedy in my life and a person close to me has died and I don't want to ever go through somebody feeling like that when I die, because I'm going to die one day. Just gruff, stoic -y, melodramatic man. I really wanted to love this. I did because Anastasia were telling, I love Anastasia, one of my favorite books. Movies, what am I saying? Movies of all time, I love it. There were some things in here, I listed them in my review that just like really got on my nerves. First of all, there were many fat phobic comments. Two, people doing things to a person when they are asleep is a big no-no for me. Like it would be probably my pet peeve list of romance books. Like just don't do it. Like I get if you have like consent, like if you're in a relationship and you're like, yeah, honey, you can do whatever you want when I'm asleep and I can wake up to you doing something cool. But if you don't have that beforehand, like, just don't do it. Wake someone up. Gosh darn. You said the G word in here was incessant. Didn't care for that. And then um, last comment is one of the characters was basically drunk the entire book. Like, he was not sober for a second, I swear. And like, anyway, I'm just gonna leave it at that, okay? <laughs> I then read another uh, little epilogue 
novella thing that I've been finding for free. I've been trying to read all of my favorite authors backlists, even like their short stories to say that I've read everything they've written. And so one is uh, The Manufaction by Tessa Dare. There's no cover or anything. This is book number 3.1, a part of the Spindle Co series. So this one is a uh, silly bonus scene after uh, A Lady by Midnight, which is, um, free to download. I think you get it off of her website. I read it directly off of her website. So it is free legally. You can read it. <laughs> I think if you just Google the manufacturing by Tessa Dare, it'll like lead you to her page where it's on there. And I just gave this three stars. It was just a short story that was funny. And then I was in a monster romance mood. So I read a bunch of monster romances or a few after this. Um, and I found one that really let me down because literally it's in the Monster Love series. You would think if a series is called Monster Love, then the characters would be screwing monsters. So this one is owned by the Lion Shifter by Imani J, I think. This is on Kindle Unlimited if you wanna check it out for yourself and see, I did not read book one in the series. It's technically book two. So I don't know if I would feel different if I read the first book. So I was really excited for this because I think this is a black love romance. I was like, cool, a black love monster romance. I have not seen that whatsoever in any book that I've looked into with monster romances. The literally the summary says in here, beware the hero is in his monster form whenever him and the heroine get it on. And I'm like, okay, that's what I signed up for. <laughs> but it lied. So this is like a, monster romance kind of where it's kind of like just shifters i don't know why they call it monster it's not really a monster it's a shifter romance he's like a big lion shifter and she's like a neighboring princess and they meet at a masquerade ball and they end up getting split apart and he's been trying to find her and knows that's his fated mate but like he's like a lion shifter but the lion shifter part is also kind of like humanoid so kind of like things like chimera like he can like stand and walk like a person in his lion form, but it can also be his regular human form too. Like he can shift. And then like, it lied. The summary lied. Like he did not get with her in his lion form. Literally the last second he shifted into his human form. I'm like, the summary lied. It would be totally different if the summary didn't say that. I might like it way better, but the summary lied to me. So it's just annoying. <laughs> I was annoyed. I was very put off. I give this one three stars. Another monster romance that I picked up is Quarter by Darkness by Adrian Blue. This is the first book in the Monsters Mate. Very short novella series. So each book in here is like 20 to 30 pages. I read like the last book in the series a couple weeks ago. Um, it's in my monster romance recommendation video if you want to go watch that. And so I was like, might as well just start with book one. So this is about a human named Olivia. She ends up being courted by a monster in the shadows named Knox. Um, and then the rest goes from there, very short. The something that was really cute that I liked is like in the monster customs, cause monsters and aliens kind of, aliens, monsters and humans know about each other in this like world. It's kind of like our world, but monsters exist and they can court humans to be their mates. And something you do when you first come across like a human you want to court, you like give them a courting gift. They meet each other for the first time in an alley. She's like, oh my gosh, who's there? And um, Knox walks out with like a necklace in his hand. It's like, he go. Like he doesn't even say anything. He's like, hi, I'm Knox here. <laughs> Cause he wants to court her so bad. I thought that was really cute, but. I just ended up giving this three stars. It was an okay monster romance for me. Then I read a favorite, okay? This one is called Sohut's Protection by A.G. Wilde. This is the second book in the Ribs Sanctuary series. Um, you can read it as a standalone if you want to. I think you would probably get the better reading experience if you read book one called Ribs Sanctuary, but you do you. The hero in here is basically the brother to the guy from book one. So you've met him in a previous book. This is a romance between Sohat and Cleo. Cleo is a human woman who was abducted from Earth and she was taken by some evil aliens and she's kind of like in a cage on a transport thing on this planet. And then her cage ends up falling off of the truck. It busts open and she escapes. And she's kind of been living in this jungle on this planet for about a year, living like Tarzan, like trying to survive on her own. Sohat has been hired as a hunter to hunt down an animal in the woods by the same evil aliens who captured her. So he's actually hunting down Cleo, not knowing that she's not an animal. Like he's trying to hunt down this creature and um, is shocked to find out that it's like a sentient person. Like it's a person with 
can talk and have feelings and everything. He's like, what the heck? And so he's basically hunting her and then falls in love with her instead. I loved this. I loved this. A.G. Wilde is definitely becoming a new favorite author for me. I love her books. Um, I think I've read like six, you know, yeah, six so far by her and they have been amazing. I love a good survival romance. So the setting in here was super fun, like alien jungles. I don't know why, alien romances that are set in the jungle dealing with survival are my thing. I just love both of these characters a lot and how they leaned on each other with their burdens and unloaded everything and became vulnerable with one another. It was so cute. And there was no third act breakup, so applause for me. I I honestly am over third act breakups at this point. Trigger warning in here for kidnapping, slavery, and blood. Tropes, you have alien romance of books with pets. There's this uh, pet that <laughs> our heroine Cleo kind of like adopts in the jungle. His name is Wawa. He is super cute. <laughs> There's a caretaking scene. Sohut gets hurt and um, Cleo has to take care of him and clean his wounds. Um, you have a damaged hero. It's on Kindle Unlimited. One of the characters has never been kissed before the hero. Um, it's a survival romance and we have a warrior woman. Gave this book five out of five stars. Next I read The Duke's Perfect Wife by Jennifer Ashley. I was gonna read this during the historical romance readathon that happened last month, but the audiobook hold did not come in in time, um, but that's okay. This is the fourth, fourth book in the Mackenzie's and McBride series. The first one being um, the Madness of Lordy and Mackenzie. I don't know why the title escaped me for a second, but there it is. So this one is about Eleanor and Hart. I know this is a fan favorite, a part of the series. And basically they were very much in love when they were younger. They got split apart. And this is like their second chance romance because Eleanor comes across some very provocative pictures of Hart that are going across society. And she does not want that to like get out. I think he's running for prime minister or something like that. And so she doesn't want it to ruin his standing in that so she kind of like teams up with heart to try and find these photographs of him and then the two of them reconnect and realize that they never stopped loving one another i really liked this one i loved seeing all the mackenzies and like the background of here as being like side characters i love in here how we got to see heart and ian's relationship because i really i love reading about that i love reading about sibling good sibling relationships and i feel like heart and ian have a very interesting yet important one and then i also just loved their second chance romance i thought it was beautiful trigger warning in here near-death experience guns shootings discussions of physical abuse and tropes you have great banter it's a historical romance there are many meddlesome family members in here um there's a near-death experience for both characters um, it's a second chance romance. It's a part of a sibling series. Um, there is a wedding and one of the characters is a widow. I ended up giving this book a four out of five stars. Next, I picked up Knocking Up His Bride by Mink. This is my first Mink book. I'm trying to find more novella authors like Jessica Ann and Cassie Mint that I just like will turn to in a time of need, you know, like you need to refresh your book. And I don't know if Mink is that for me, honestly. First of all, I wanna say the title has nothing to do with the book. There is no bride. There is no pregnancy. There is no knocking up his bride. I don't understand. <laughs> so that was a little off-putting that the title had nothing to do with what was in the book. So basically there's a group of girlfriends who end up getting stuck in the mountains, the snowy mountains. Our hero comes across one of them, falls for the heroine named Clover, and um, all of them are stuck in this house that the hero has with his friends. And of course there are the same number of women that there are men, so everyone has a match. Anyway, this was just not for me. Too insta lovey for my taste. Um, and yeah, sometimes I like insta love, but like this was just not it for me. I gave this book two out of five stars. Then I read another one of uh, Ruby Dixon's Ice Queen of Marian short stories. This is Tally's story, book number 16.1. Um, and this is just a very short novella about Georgia trying to get little Tally to go to sleep. Very cute, gave it three stars. I'm trying to read all of Ruby Dixon's backlist. I am almost there. I think I have like under five more books to read. Um, so one of them that I read this month was Double Dare You, which is the last book that she's written in the Bedlam Butcher's Motorcycle Club series. And this is definitely one of my favorites. I really, really, really enjoyed this one. In the previous book of the series, this is book number seven. In book number six, Becca is the sister to Lucky, the heroine from the previous book. And you see her, Becca, getting kidnapped by a rivaling motorcycle club. And so Epic and Locke, who are part of the Bedlam Butchers Motorcycle Club, have been tasked to track her down and rescue her. She has been put in a sex trafficking ring. It gets dark at times. I wanna say this is Ruby's like darkest book, um, in the beginning at least, and then it gets lighter and fluffier when the romance happens. We have our first also MMF, 
book by Ruby and in this series in general, because all of the other books in the series are MFM, so the guys are not together. This is the first one where we have a bisexual hero and um, he's crushing hardcore on his bride partner. And so I liked it. I think this is the only bi hero that Ruby's written. I know she's written a bi heroine in um, the Ice Home series. Um, I think that's Steph from Steph's Outcast. Um, so I really liked that. I honestly wish that all the other books in the series were MMF, but I'll take what I can get with this one. I just love the dynamic of all between all three characters. They're all like stuck in a secluded cabin together while they're trying to protect Becca and kind of like keep her out of danger until one person is eliminated. Um, so they spend their time together in this cabin. <laughs> so trigger warning in here for kidnapping, human trafficking, guns, shootings, and branding. The branding one was hard for my stomach at times. Um, tropes in here, you have a three plus grouping, um, a motorcycle club, age gap. I think Locke is quite older than both of them, the other two characters. It's LGBTQ plus and it's on Kindle Unlimited. I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Another Ruby Dixon short story is Rukar's story, which is book number 13.1. And this was just a short novella about Ruk putting his son Rukar to bed by telling him a story. Another really cute one, I gave this one four stars. I read another favorite alien romance. We have Captive of the Horde King by Zoe freaking Draven. This is my first book by Zoe Draven and it will not be my last. Um, This is the first book in her Horde Kings of Dakar. Basically, it's an alien romance series with human women being matched up with aliens that act, sound, and kind of look like the Dothraki from Game of Thrones. So Cal Drogo and all of his people. So I was like, sign me up, sign me up. I know my friend Jen has been recommending these books to me constantly and I finally got to it and I'm so glad that I did. So this one is about Erokin. I think it's how you say his name. I'm sorry about pronunciations. I suck at them. Um, Erokin and Luna. Luna and her brother have been living on this human settlement on this planet and um, they are all starving and there are rules by the Dakari. I think that's the people's name, kind of like Dothraki, Dakari, whatever. Um, the Dakari people have these ooh, rules where humans are not allowed to put fire to their land or hunt any of the animals there. And so they're all basically starving. They have to grow their own food and it's not really working. And so her brother is basically like, I heard this fact that if you burn the land that the plants are on, the soil will become more fertilized. So he does that, but he ends up sparking fire to a lot of the land, the Dakari can see their fire and they come running to figure out who set their land on fire. So Luna knows that her brother is in deep doo-doo basically. And is like, I'm going to sacrifice myself to save his life. And so she does just that when the Dakari people come, Erekin is the horde king of this group of aliens. And she comes up to him and is like, I will do anything to save my brother's life, take me instead. And so that's exactly what he does. He claims that when he first sees her eyes, she is his mate. She has been sent by the goddess herself, I think her name is Kakari, um, to be his mate and his queen. And so that's exactly what he does. He takes her back to his people to make her his queen. I loved this. The barbarian aspect of this book is amazing. This is what I've been wanting with a barbarian alien romance. It is so good. The romance in here was amazing. I love a brutal barbarian hero who becomes a total softie for his woman. Yes. I also love how both of these people learned how to fully immerse themselves and learn about the other person's culture. And I just can't wait to read the rest of the books in the series. I've already finished book two, but that was in June. So talk about it in June. But yeah, trigger warning in here for blood, death, branding. Attempted sexual assault and kidnapping. For tropes, you have immune romance, alpha hero, barbarians, captor captive, Kindle Unlimited, it's a married couple, there's royalty, and um, there's a scarred character. The hero's back is covered in scars. So I loved this. I gave this a five out of five stars. I then found another novella that I wanted to try. We have Stolen by the Giant by Nyla Lilly. This is on Kindle Limited. I just found it while scrolling one day. So this is the romance between Holden and Esther. Holden is feared amongst his town folk because he's missing an eye. He's very large and very scarred. And so he becomes a recluse in the mountains and has to come into town every now and then to get supplies. So he's in need of, I think like, a new knife or something and he goes into like the black myth, blacksmith shop and there he realizes that the blacksmith has been keeping a woman locked up in the attic and so he decides to rescue her and take her back to be with him. This was really cute but I wish there was more development between the two characters so it was okay for me. Um, trips in here, it's on Kindle Unlimited, 
and it is a new novella. I gave this book a three out of five stars. Next, I decided to pick up my next J.R. Ward book in her publication order. We have Claimed, which is the first book in the Lair of the Woven series, um, which is kind of like, I feel like her Wolf Shifter books, but this was not my favorite. This was probably my least favorite book that I've ever read by J.R. Ward, and that is so sad to say. I can't really even describe this book. I don't even know what happened in it. I don't understand just did not like it um really and the black tiger brotherhood was like brought in in chapters and i don't understand why um i feel like this could have just been an entirely separate series like why does she have to bring in the bdb books i don't know anyway i gave this two stars not my cup of tea at all i don't know if i'm gonna read the other books um when they come out i might i don't know then i read dirty wolf by ad ward i saw one of her tiktoks and i was like okay i'll check out one of her books because it's on audible plus and i have an audible plus account so I checked out uh, Dirty Wolf, which is a wolf shifter romance. And that's just not it for me. Like the dialogue and AD Awards writing is not my taste. Very cringy, very campy, very like pop culture reference-esque dialogue that is not befitting 30 year olds or upper 20 year olds or even any 20 year old. Like they talked like they were 15. I was like, y'all are grown adults. Like. <laughs> Anyway, he's a wolf shifter. She's not. Wolf shifters are supposed to be secret, but then he wants to tell her his secret and whatever. Gave it 2.5 stars. I'm thinking more of a two now, honestly, now that I think about it. And the last book that I read was When She's Lonely by Ruby Dixon, book number seven, a part of the Rizdor series. You can read this on its own, honestly. I feel like Ruby does a great job at writing her Rizdor's books as a standalone book. So this is a romance between Ashley and Hex, Kex, Kex, K-H-E-X. Hex, I don't know. He works on a planet called Rizza 3 where there are a bunch of human refugees and um, Ashley is one of those human refugees who owns like a farm and Kex is one of like the custodians on the planet. I think kind of like policemen trying to um, make sure that humans are not um, bullied or attacked by other aliens on the planet. And let's just say Ashley's not a favorite amongst the other locals on the planet. People say that she ignores them, that she's rude, that she doesn't really talk to people. And so she's not really a fan favorite and she's not really a fan favorite of Kex either. But then he slowly starts to get to know her and realizes that she is hard of hearing and can't hear people. That's why she quote unquote ignores people or people think she's dumb or talks too loud. It's because she is almost completely deaf in one ear, I believe. And so she has kind of a hard time hearing people. And so on earth she would get around with hearing aids, but when she was abducted, they took their hearing aids away. And so Ashley used to be like a slave. And if you're a imperfect slave, you're basically put down. And so she has to pretend that she's just dumb and can't hear people rather than tell people that she's hard of hearing because she does not want to be offed. Kex like learns about her hard of hearing and wants to become her friend. And so he's like, I won't tell anybody else that you're hard of hearing if you agree to go on a bunch of cute dates with me. And so that's what they do. This is super cute and super sweet. It's actually also own voices. You, If you read the author's note, you learn that Ruby Dixon is hard of hearing herself and she uses hearing aids, which I did not know. Um, so I really love the representation here. And uh, I know that my lovely friend Victoria over at Victoria Reads Romance, um, she really liked the representation too. I believe she said her mom is hard of hearing and um, her mom has a lot of the same feelings that Ashley has in here, which I thought when I watched her video, I was like, oh my gosh, amazing. Love that, love good representation. I just love this romance. It was really sweet, really cute. Um, it's not my favorite thing in the world, so that's why I gave it four stars, but I just love this cute, um, kind of like enemies to friends to lovers romance. For tropes in here, you have alien romance, friends to lovers. I hate everyone in the world but you. Basically, Ashley says that about Kex. And it's on Kindle Unlimited. There's hard of hearing rep and there's disability representation. There you have it. Those are all of the books that I read in the later half of May. Again, if you want to know about the other books that I read in May, be sure to check out my last May wrap up. Please let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. Um, and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me an alien emoji down in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.